Hey, it's your buddy the Rhino here for Survival Skills 101. Whew. I'm going to show you how to purify water. We're going to talk about the nitty gritty of disinfecting your water. Understand this, you should have a bunch of uh, barrels of water in your garage just for some kind of an emergency. But we're going to talk about the front lines of disinfecting. Let's say that all that water ran out and now you, you have to disinfect your own water uh, wherever you can find it. Well, you know, the best way to disinfect your water is to have already have a water filter that maybe you're drinking out of and it disinfects it as you drink. That's the best way. The second way is to uh, boil your water. I mean, boiling works fantastic at killing pathogens and germs in your water. The trouble is you're not going to have a fire going all the time and it takes a long time to boil your water. So what does that leave? That leaves things like Clorox, um, iodine, pool shock, uh, chemicals that you can use to put into your water to disinfect. And I guess there's a fourth way to disinfect your water and that's to leave it out in the sunlight for a period of time. Uh, while that works, that's not going to be my way of doing it. Uh, I'm probably going to uh, use pool shock first of all, but you know, uh, chlorine bleach is really effective. And the reason it's really effective is because you can also share your Clorox with your neighbors uh, or trade with them if you want to. So, uh, and understand this, that uh, Clorox is really cheap to buy, to keep around. So it's, uh, I'm going to say this, it's cheap to buy, but in an emergency situation, it's more valuable than gold. So understand this, that uh, one gallon of bleach will purify 3,800 gallons of water. That is an amazing number. All right, so, uh, you know, just that small investment that you make will uh, purify a lot of waters for you and your neighbors as well. So that's a good reason to keep bleach and you can also clean with it uh, and disinfect things around your house uh, in an emergency situation. So uh, let me just talk about how Clorox works. Clorox is like, uh, well, it contains chlorine, which in fact is what's in a swimming pool that, that kills germs when you swim in it. So we use it in swimming pools all the time. And so basically what we're doing is we're using chlorine to kill the pathogens in the water. Now it doesn't kill everything, but it kills a lot of stuff. So the first thing I want you to understand about Clorox is this, and I don't think a lot of people understand, that, understand this, that you can only keep this for a short amount of time before it goes bad. Clorox has about a one year shelf life before it starts to rapidly deteriorate. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to replace these uh, every year. Uh, on my bottles what I do is I write the date uh, that I bought this. So May 2012 is when I bought this. So May 2013 I'm going to buy some more and these are going to get thrown away uh, or use them for wash or whatever, give them to my neighbors or whatever. So uh, you, you need to make sure that you're not keeping them for five years. If you're keeping your Clorox around for five years thinking it's going to work, not going to work at all. So uh, and understand this that uh, if you keep your Clorox in a cold garage, it will break it down faster. So make sure you keep your Clorox in a nice warm place, only keep it for a year and then replace it. It's really inexpensive and it's, it's uh, you know, no problem to buy. Um, if you will look on the bottom of a Clorox, it has a 6% solution of what they call sodium hypochlorite, uh, hence the term Clorox. Uh, you want a dilution of about 5 to 6% uh, when you're disinfecting your water. Now understand this, this is on the front lines of disinfecting. I need to disinfect right now. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about now is for what you're doing this very second, not hey I'm going to um, water store and I need to disinfect that water to keep it safe because city water already has chlorine in it and you need to test for that before you go putting Clorox in. But here's the rule of thumb on how, um, how much Clorox you put in to water to disinfect. And what I do again is I write it right here on the bottle. I don't want to have to sit and remember. So I'm going to give you the breakdown of this. Understand this too. Have a bunch of eye, uh, eye droppers, eye ear droppers they're called, and have a bunch of these. Have about, I don't know, 10. And what you can do is keep them for yourself and give them to your neighbors as well. But keeping these close by, a lot of people just tape them onto the Clorox themselves. 
I might just keep them in packages for when I'm going to need them. So you have these uh, as well to put into your water. So here's the breakdown. You're going to add two drops of Clorox for every quart. Uh, eight drops for every gallon. So eight little drops per gallon of water. So if you have 100 gallons, that's 800 drops. Um, there is a half teaspoon in five gallons. Let's see, three U.S. teaspoons equals one tablespoon. So I want to just tell you that. That, and so there are three tablespoons in every 100 gallons of water, roughly. Uh, just depends. Uh, if you find that your water is cloudy, uh, maybe you got it out of a pond, because that in a disaster situation, you're getting your water wherever you can, maybe from a rain barrel or something like that, and you need to disinfect that water, and it's cloudy, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get that matter and particulates out of there. And how do you do that? Uh, you could use a t-shirt, um, you know, coffee filters work pretty good. If you keep a bunch of coffee filters around, you're able to get all the, um, I don't know, the, the yuckiness out of that water before you uh, put your chlorine in it. So, uh, and if it's cloudy like that, after you've got it out of a pond, you might want to double the drops that I just told you. Uh, it doesn't matter. What you need to understand is that it should taste and smell like chlorine. Then you know that the, that chlorine's working pretty good. Uh, on the last thing that I want to tell you is don't go and purify your water and then put it in a dirty container because it just makes it, uh, it just makes it bad for drinking again. So understand this. Purified water goes into purified containers. A tablespoon of bleach in a, uh, per gallon in a, in a, maybe you can put it in a five gallon bucket and clean all your other containers in that. All right, make sure that uh, you know everything that you're putting water in is clean as well. All right, uh, and one thing that I forgot to add is that when you put uh, the drops in your water, make sure you let it sit for about 30 to 45 minutes uh, before you start drinking it. So understand that's the front line of, uh, of water purification. Have some, uh, to st have some on hand so that you can use it and more importantly you can give it to your neighbors because your neighbors are going to be uh, in, a, in a bad way just like you. And to be able to share with them, uh, good things will come back in return. I hope that helped. I'm the Rhino for Survival Skills 101. Please, if you like what you're seeing, tell your friends about us. Subscribe to our channel. Are you prepared to look forward?